episode of the Big Damn Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Okay, so yes, it's another gin episode of the show. Um, I thought last week's episode was uh, so much fun, I thought, no, I'm going to do another episode on gin. And um, all of the gins that uh, I've got in front of me today are um, relatively new to me. I think uh, samples uh, arrived over the course of, uh, well, since January, shall we say. So they're all relatively uh, well, relatively new to me anyway. Um, some of them have been in production for, for quite some time. Um, I'm not going to go into sort of too much detail about uh, the individual uh, producers. I'll say a little bit about them when I uh, introduce the lineup. But um, uh, otherwise I'll be here all day, to be, to be frankly honest with you. Um, and what you really want to know is... <laughs> what the gins taste like and if you want further information obviously each of the producers has their own website the links are in the information below the video in the box so uh, you know if you want to find out more there's uh, there's there, those and also um, some of them have been reviewed on the, the rather excellent gin foundry website which uh, goes into an awful lot of detail and uh, um, is pr quite an impressive uh, website for you know looking at uh, uh, interesting information about the gins that they review. So um, there you go. Got a free plug for you guys. <laughs> Honestly. Um, so yeah, basically, I'm um, just going to introduce the, the lineup and tell you a little bit about the producer, the botanicals, yada yada yada, all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, and the only other thing to say is, of course, uh, some of these, one of these, two of these, maybe more of these, might be uh, in our. Um, uh, gin tasting evening which is on the 25th tickets are still available price of 30 quid uh, and be, it will be held in the shop on the 25th so anyway uh, I guess that's enough of that let's uh, let's have a look at today's uh, lineup then shall we I find empty lies, the river will right okay so we're going to kick off with uh, the three rivers gin this is bottled at 40 percent and uh, it's distilled in Manchester, um, in a uh, distillery built in the arches under probably a railway line, I'm guessing, uh, somewhere in, in the middle of Manchester. I don't really know Manchester particularly well, but as far as I'm aware, it was founded in 2016 by some chap called Dave Rigby. Um, and uh, it's called, actually called the City of Manchester Distillery, and I believe was the first a new distillery to be built in um, Manchester um, since the year whenever, I guess. Um, it, uh, in the, the grand tradition of all of these kind of um, craft distillers, for want of a better word, uh, they <laughs> they named their um, still and they called it Angel. Well, why not, I suppose. Anyway, uh, one of the interesting things about this particular gin is uh, the use of oats as one of their botanicals. I think there's a, a tie-in with the with Manchester and oats. I think it may well have something to do with with Manchester being a, a you know, well going back a few years uh, quite a, an active port. So uh, I'm guessing it's got something to do with that. But like I said, you know you can find out all their information on their website. So uh, their botanicals puff oats. They use juniper, orris, coriander. Almond, vanilla, cardamom, orange peel, and black pepper. So nothing too weird and, and wacky. Um, and hopefully, you know, a nice a nice balanced gin. Second gin we're gonna be looking at now, you've probably seen the picture, the, the you know, the introductory picture, it comes in a fantastic art deco-y kind of bottle, which they probably spent a fair amount of money on. So um, this is the Cheshire Grins Gin, uh, produced by um, the Cheshire Distilleries Company Limited. Um, I believe it's uh, three times distilled, and the distillery itself was founded in 2015. Um, now, uh, I'm guessing it's going to be quite an expensive gin, and uh, you'll have to forgive me for not not stocking it, guys. But you haven't sent me any prices yet, so if you're watching it, get in touch, and because it well. We'll find out if it's a good gin in due course, but I've just kind of probably given the game away, haven't I? That uh, I think it's a good gin if I'm prepared to stock it. But anyway, um, so again, the, the um, we're not talking weird and wonderful botanicals, thankfully. We're talking fairly straightforward, but uh, so we're talking juniper, Cheshire blueberries, um, cucumber, sweet orange peel, cinnamon, nutmeg, orris, and lemon. So hopefully <laughs> it's not all show and flashy bottling and bottle and 
no substance. Um, well, I think, I, yeah, you know that it's going to be good, otherwise I wouldn't want to stock it. Anyway, <coughs> the, uh, the, the next one we'll be looking at, well, there's two produced by uh, a company called the English uh, Drinks Company. Um, now, this is... Uh, contract distilled at Langley's in Birmingham so they don't have their own distillery at this present moment in time I'm guessing like a lot of uh, these kind of companies they've probably got that in the back of their mind that they would like to build their own distillery but don't have the odd half a million pounds to lie around you know just to sort of build the, the thing with um, and anyway as you know I'm not a gin Nazi and I really don't care if you've got your own distillery or not it's it's the quality of, uh, of, of said juice that is what that is what that's great English isn't it <laughs> it's what matters shall we say so we've got the two uh, the first one we've been looking at is called the pink gin and as you can see it has a slight pinky hue to it uh, that is um, probably coming from the, the pomegranate which is one of the, the uh, botanicals they also use chinchona bark uh, juniper coriander orange peel angelica root cassia bark oris lemon peel uh, licorice root nutmeg and cinnamon so could be could be an interesting combination uh, the fourth one we're looking at is the cucumber gin. Name kind of gives it away, doesn't it? I must admit, I've never been a big fan of, of gins that, that contain uh, a fair amount of cucumber. I often find it kind of tastes and smells quite kind of green and watery and a bit insipid and, you know, um, so... I'm expecting big things of that. Um, obviously, um, cucumber is one of the main botanicals, but again, they use juniper, coriander seed, orange peel, angelica root, cassia bark, oris, lemon peel, licorice root, nutmeg, cinnamon, and of course, cucumber. So uh, we shall see what uh, what that one is like. And number five, yes, this is the uh, the Nottingham Gin, um, distilled uh, in um, Snetton in Nottingham, if you uh, know Nottingham at all. Uh, it was uh, founded, I think, by, by a chap called Wayne Asher in about 2016 uh, in a place called Ruddington, which is just outside of Nottingham, and then he moved to larger premises in the city itself. And um, uh, again, named his still called Jenny and uh, built it himself um, remarkably but then I think his background was certainly in, in engineering so he certainly knew about pipe work and all this kind of stuff and uh, if you look at the pictures it's quite a smart looking uh, um, smart looking still and uh, um, obviously going to pay, them, pay uh, Wayne and the distillery a visit in due course because we've now managed to get our hands on it I won't bore you to death with the uh, the whys and the wherefores of why we haven't uh, been able to stock it considering that he started production in about 2016 and went on to become uh, or was awarded in that year a classic gin of the year at the craft distilling expo in london so uh, we've been wanting to get hands on it for some time and now we have and um well I'll let you know what we've seen due course what it is like now i was talking to wayne the other day in actual fact and i really should have asked him <laughs> what the botanicals are because there's nine botanicals of which i know five of uh juniper sweet orange uh coriander cassia bark and cinnamon so maybe i'll have a guess at what some of the other ones are um maybe i won't but we'll taste it anyway and we shall see and the last one with the rather smart label uh, is uh, the called Colonsay Gin. Now, again, this is another gin that is produced by a company called Wild, Wild Time Spirits, but they don't have their own distillery as yet. Uh, it's distilled at the Strathern Distillery in Perthshire. Uh, the company was set up by a couple called Finley and Eileen Geeky. A great name for, uh, for someone that's sort of really into gin um so they are certainly gin geeks <laughs> oh yeah i know i know um so uh the the couple i believe moved to the hebridean island of colonsay and i believe there's a, a race on with uh, another uh, colonsay uh, gin producer to get the first uh, gin distillery actually physically built so uh, i don't know where they're at with regards to that but like i said this is uh, currently distilled uh, on the mainland in Perthshire and uh, they use uh, juniper, angelica root, calamus root, coriander, licorice, orange peel and orris 
Um, and one of the things that's most striking about it is is the label, and it features um, uh, historical. Well, I say historical. I mean, that's probably stretching the truth somewhat. But uh, uh, according to legend of, of the island, uh, a brownie or a grew and Gak in the uh, in the Gaelic, I believe that's Gaelic, uh, uh, arrived on a Viking longboat, was washed up on the shore and uh, made uh, Colin say her home and uh, they were renowned for uh, being being sort of magical helpers shall we say so nothing nothing like a bit of a bit of myth which has absolutely nothing at all to do with the product but you know it's kind of it's a nice story isn't it you know at the end of the day so um, and like I said I think the, whoever did the artwork for the label did a fantastic job of, of it because it is a really really striking label um, but as you well know that is by the by, it's all a case of what does the actual product taste like rather than uh, what the bottle or the label looks like. So, um, so yeah, right, that's today's lineup, and so let's kick off with the um, Three Rivers gin. Then. I wanna dance. I wanna drink the okay, so uh, <laughs> now finally get around to actually tasting some gin. Let's uh, see what the nose gives us then, shall we? Now there's a definite oatiness, uh, a sort of, you know, kind of cereally spirit character. Um, but the juniper is quite, quite up front. Um, it's got a sort of bit of a sweetness to it, there's a slight earthiness, plenty of citrus. As a, the oats kind of give it a kind of a nice fullness a bit of, and a bit of, uh, almost a bit of sweetness. There's a touch of orange. Um, and the, the pepper is kind of just slightly in the background. Yeah, it's a, it's a really pleasant gin. It's got it's got some lovely balance. Like I said, it's got some spirit character. It's got some some crispness from the uh, from the the uh, from the citrus, and it's got some some nice kind of weight uh, to it uh, from the oats. So yeah, certainly a lovely nose. Let's see what the palate's like. quite full again slightly oily oaty um, cereally sort of spirit notes kind of up front then in comes the juniper a little bit of, uh, of orange and black pepper it's a, a slight slight green cardamom note on the finish just adding just a little bit of bitterness just to kind of you know add, a, add another um, element of flavour I think that's actually really very, very nice. I think they've got the balance between the spirit character and the botanicals just about absolutely spot on. And I think that's just a, um, a lovely, fairly full, weighty uh, gin. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely pleasant. Really. Right, okay, so let's move on to the Cheshire Grins gin. Now, the story with this is it's all based on um, that the Mad Hatter and the the, the, the the Green Cat and Alice in Wonderland and all that kind of stuff. I mean, again, we have a nice story, but absolutely nothing at all to do with the gin whatsoever. Um, but anyway, you know, like I said, it's what's uh, what's in the glass that counts. Slightly fresher than the um, uh, the Three Rivers, obviously. Um, it's got quite a lot of citrus, uh, getting sort of the, the lemon and the orange. It's got a sort of smoky, sort of underlying, sort of smoky juniper character. Um, again, there's a bit of oiliness and a little bit of almost kind of wheaty spirit character. Um, considering it's been triple distilled, it's it, you know got a nice amount of, uh, of spirit character. And, and as you know, I like I like a bit of spirit character in my gin. I just don't want it all to be about the botanicals. Um, but you know, it's all got to be about the balance and. Um, this is really nicely balanced. I love the smokiness of the juniper. Um, it's a little berry note kind of coming through. You kind of have to work a little bit hard to kind of get the berries. And there's a, a little bit of a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg as well. It's all all really quite harmonious, quite earthy. It's but like I say, it's that sort of smoky juniper note that's um 
that's that's quite uh, quite noticeable. But um, yeah, I, uh, another really well put together gin. Let's see what the uh, the panel's like. Again, it kind of kicks off with the spirit character. It's quite oily and wheaty and full. Um, juniper kind of comes through um, along with the, along with the nutmeg um, and um, a sort of slightly sweet sort of uh, spice note. Uh, again, it's a really harmonious, well balanced. Yeah, I mean that's 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 a really nice gin. The, the citrus that I discover on the nose isn't quite so sort of prevalent on on the palate, and the palate is a little bit more angled towards the character of of the spirit. But it's still got a nice fullness. There's there is a sort of again you kind of the, the sort of blueberry kind of berry note is not sort of like in your face which which is quite nice it's quite subtle um, and is, is, is sort of you know more in the background um, the juniper isn't quite as smoky as it is on the nose in actual fact it's a little bit more earthier but again I think the balance is really quite pleasant and again and keying that up with a very unusual bottle which would probably take up some bloody room on the, on the shelf if it's untrue um, I think kind of works in their favour and um, you know I'm a bit of a sucker for, for art deco kind of stuff as it has to be said so yeah another, another nice okay so let's have a bit of pink now um, let's just see what those give us then shall we the, the, the pomegranate is fairly sort of noticeable straight off the bat but it's got again it's got a nice kind of full almost wheaty spirit kind of note subtle smoky juniper again touch of lemon a little bit of a little bit of licorice and cassia just kind of coming through yeah, I think that's that's a lovely, aromatic, appealing nose. Um, it's got a nice warmth to it, and it's got that kind of... It, it sort of smells kind of pinky, if you see what I mean. Um, and again, it's pretty harmonious. It's not it's not kind of slapping you in the face with, uh, with the, the pomegranate kind of character. And there's a, a little bit of barkiness as well, so... Yeah, I, I, I quite like this. I think this is quite impressive. And um, I have actually bought it, and it is on the shelves, and it's you know, the usual kind of price, you know, 38 ish quid. Um, yeah, I like that nose. That's, that's, a, that's a nice nose. Let's see what the power's like. Again, quite oily, quite berry-like in actual fact. Yes, I'm getting the pomegranate, but it's also, it kind of mm, sort of moves in a sort of kind of bilberry, blueberry sort of um, slight, almost red cherry kind of sort of character. There's some nice spices on the mid palate. Um, certainly the uh, cinnamon comes through on the mid palate, but... Um, there's got a slight sweet edge to it, which is probably the, uh, the the pomegranate giving it that sort of sweet edge. It's balanced quite nicely on the finish. You get the citrus kind of coming through on the finish, the orange, the lemon. And that's really quite nicely balanced, I think. Finish is quite dry, sort of starts off with a bit of sweetness and then sort of slowly sort of moves through into 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 a dry a dry finish, which is quite nice. I think it's got a lovely progression, to be honest with you. And, and again, yeah, really pleasant gin. Right, okay, so let's move on to the cucumber. But I don't have to put my nose in, in the glass to smell the cucumber. I can actually smell it from here. It is that strong. Um, and it is pungently cucumbery. It, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, I mean, there is some... There's a little bit of wheatiness under... Oh, no, not wheaty. Well, there's a bit of sort of spirit character. There's some juniper. 
it is a bit kind of like you know in your face cucumber but you know what it, it smells like pure cucumber um, it's not that kind of vague wet green sort of watery kind of um, aroma it is a real it's just like <laughs> sticking a cucumber right next to your nose um, yeah I mean there is some some a little bit of spice in the background but really it's 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 cucumber city here and um, I, mu I must admit uh, you know there are, like I said this is probably the nicest cucumber gin that I have actually tasted I mean I'm certainly not I'm not a fan of uh, you know what um, and yes you can argue it's a little bit one-dimensional but I have got it on the shelf because I think you know there are there are customers that sort of love this kind of style of gin and you know, I'm always, always keen to kind of steer them away from the sort of somewhat corporate big names, shall we say. Um, so, yeah, so give it a bit of time and, and, and the sort of like the nutmeg and the cinnamon do kind of start to come through with a, a little bit of the, the juniper. But uh, you, you almost kind of have to sort of ignore, I suppose, the cucumber. Um, to get those kind of notes, but uh, anyway, let's uh, let's see what the power's like. It's got quite a bit of finish, actually. Certainly, I like the cashier bark and the licorice and then the, the nutmeg kind of bit of the finish a little bit but it kind of balances it kind of works the the, the, the cucumber is again up front obvious um, but it has a sort of this is probably going to be a bit stupid thing to say but an almost translucent quality it, it, it tastes um, cucumbery but it's kind of pure it's got a lovely purity um, and the juniper kind of comes through it it's kind of Hopefully I'm making kind of sense here, but uh, um, what I'm trying to say is that yes, there's a lot of, of, of juniper there, but there's certainly other characteristics kind of coming through. There is the um, the spices, the cassia bug, a little bit of citrus, uh, and, and the juniper kind of coming through. But, you know, if you like cucumber gins, if you like that sort of freshness um, and, and purity of, of cucumber... <laughs> I kind of like cucumber, I like it on a salad. Um, and like I said, it doesn't taste vague, it doesn't taste green, watery, it has a lovely purity of character. So, yeah, I, 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 think, it, I think it deserves a space on the gin shelf, so it is indeed on there. And the, like I said, the bottle is quite striking as, as well, but, uh, I mean, you know, being black and uh, all that kind of stuff, and yeah, I like a bit of black. <laughs> Right, okay, let's move on to the Nottingham Gin. Now, um, I'm hoping this is going to be good. I know it's good. You know, I'm, I'm stocking it for God's sake, you know. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, it's, yeah, it's it's got a quite citrus uh, and juniper up front character. It's a, it's kind of, it's a classic London dry. Um, but there's a, again, a sort of a slight, slight oily kind of spirit character, a little bit of a, I put my finger on it. It's slightly starchy in in, in in character. In actual fact, I mean, I don't think it's kind of. I don't think the base spirit is is um, uh, potato or uh, derived. But I could be wrong. It's certainly got a, a sort of slight starchiness. There's an earthy quality to to the juniper. A natural. Um, it's not a sweet juniper. It's a really natural kind of juniper character. It's a little bit of it's almost kind of tea leafy notes. Um, I mean, I don't think tea leaf is probably one of the botanicals, but it's certainly got that sort of leafy, almost kind of tobacco leaf earth. That's a, that is a really, really impressive gin, it has to be said. Um, yeah, and there's a touch of sweet spice as well, certainly getting a little bit of almost kind of coriandery kind of notes. Um, I mean, what was, uh, what was the uh, the botanicals? Yeah, coriander. Um, 
and like I said, I mean, it's it. Well, once you kind of sniffed it a few times, the kind of you, you kind of like I said, it was initially quite orangey, quite citric uh, and junipery. Um, but once that's kind of passed, you start to get this kind of earthy, tea leafy kind of character, which is um, really intriguing, really nice. I like this. Let's see what the power's like. Again, this is quite there's a slight starchiness to the to the, the spirit, but that's really kind of offset by the sort of by, by the orange. It's really sort of quite intense, but not orangey orange. It's kind of you know more kind of lemon orange, if you see what I mean. Um, again, the, the the juniper is quite quite earthy, uh, quite natural in character. There's a, a touch of coriander. Again, that slight sort of leafy. Um, note in the background, a bit, which yeah, just, just says tea leaf to me, you know, um, and it's got a lovely complexity, uh, and the citrus kind of comes back on the finish with 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 quite a nice bite and a refreshing sort of um, intensity, and all the while a kind of like you know, it's it you've got the the sort of the the, the, the juniper sort of like the earthy juniper note just just carries on and. Um, the other flavours kind of like work around it and um, mm, that is a very nice gin and I can see why that uh, won uh, an award should we say because that is um, very impressive and from Nottingham as well which is uh, even better so uh, yeah nice one. <laughs> and finally we're on to the Colin Sage Inn um, like I said uh, this is uh, made by the geekies, <laughs> so um, I'm sure that I'm sure they've had uh, no end of uh, jokes about that. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's see what the nose gives us then, shall we? It's got a nice kind of um, fresh, wild, um, sort of herbally botanical juniper. There's a touch of of dusty spice. coriander and it's it's probably the spiciest of the of the gins in actual fact um, although um, there's not a huge amount of spice other than than coriander but that does seem to have quite an intense impression on the nose um, there's a little bit of citrus there's also kind of a, a quite a beguiling sweetness to it as well and um, yeah, I like this. It's a, a lovely nose. Uh, the only negative note on it, and, it, and it's nothing at all to do with the quality of the spirit, is the price. Um, but it's bottled in 50 CL bottles and is would have to sit on the shelf at the mid 30s, which is just too expensive for for a Scottish gin or a, a UK gin. I mean, yes, as a retailer, you could get away with with charging that kind of money for um, a European gin or a Scandinavian gin, you know, there's the additional sort of transportation costs, yada, 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 and, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I've got to sell the stuff, you know, and I find it really difficult to sort of justify a, a, a 50 CL bottle from, you know, a UK um, distiller uh, at that kind of money, which is a shame. I mean, you know, if you equate that to, a, say, a 70 CL bottle then you're looking at sort of like mid 50s and you know that's that's ridiculous I mean you know nobody you know is going to pay that money for it I, I'm sorry to say this but you know this is a lovely gin but your pricing is just way way off um, I, I really like this gin but I just wouldn't sell it it would just sit on the shelf and you know I'd do my best to say yeah this is a lovely gin but you know getting people to fork out you know 38 quid for a 50 sale bottle when they can fork out 38 quid for a 70 sale bottle i know that's a, that's a bit of a kind of you know um that it, it's a it's all about economies of scale isn't it at the end of the day it's like you know you, you think well why would i spend that on that 
I mean, yes, all right, you can, you can sell it, like I said, if it was a Scandinavian gin or something like that, you, you, you've kind of got a sort of a reason why it's that kind of price. And, and even so, like I said, you know, the, the sweet spot is the sub 40. It's, you know, 30 to 40 quid. Once you start getting above 40 quid, you know, your, the sales really do tail off. And um, it's, that is just the way these things are, you know. Um, and I think uh, it, it, even even some of the gins that are below 30 quid, people kind of not necessarily kind of think, well, why are they so cheap? Because they're so, they, they kind of expect that sort of, you know, small batch maybe or craft gins to be in that sort of 30 to 40 pound kind of region. And when most gins retail in that kind of region, you, you can understand that. But anyway, let's, uh, let's see what the power's like. It's a lovely sweetness to that spirit. A sweet orange, sweet juniper. But there's a kind of rootiness as well. There's a kind of slight earthiness. There's a, um, a touch of sort of citric note uh, that kind of balances up that sweetness. And yeah, it's kind of easy going, but there's a, there's a nice complexity to it. And, you know, I would love to put that on the shelf, but I just know it would just sit there. Um, and it has a sort of a slight saltiness right in the finish. I mean, maybe that's an association rather than because it's obviously not distilled on, on, on the Hebridean island. Um, it's distilled in, in bloody Scotland, so ain't going to have any coastal character kind of coming through, really, is it? So, you know, it's a kind of minerally sort of saltiness and by association and, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's a lovely gin. It's a really good quality gin, and I hope that uh, you know that, that they they sell lots, and I hope they they actually manage to sort of build their own distillery. Um, and who knows? I mean, that may well completely and utterly change the character of their spirit, unless they kind of replicate the spirits at uh, uh, or the stills at uh, or the still, I should say, at um, Strahan. So yeah. Not really nice gin to finish with, good intensity, I mean it certainly helps being bottled at 47%, um, but I just don't like the price. <laughs>
Um, and I like the kind of slightly weird, tea leafy kind of character it actually has. And I love the fact that it's from Nottingham. And uh, I love the fact that we can finally actually stick it on our shelves. And I'm sure it will do really, really well. So, um, yeah, certainly worth that, worth looking into. And the same can be said for the Colonsay. I think it's a lovely gin. It's got a wildness to it. It kind of has a... A, a representation of, of where it comes from. It is, it is very much like some of the Scandinavian gins, although um, the Scandinavian gins tend to sort of take botanicals from their local areas, uh, but it kind of has that kind of windswept Hebridean kind of feeling to it. It's just the bloody price. You know, if you could, you know, if I could put that on, on the shelf, you know, 50 sale bottle, if I could put that on the shelf at, you know, what? Mid twenties, maybe, um, you know, twenty nine ninety five. I'm sure it would sell, but you know, mid thirties and an extra tenner, it's just, it's just not going to sell. And you know, that is just being completely and utterly honest. You know, lovely, lovely product, but shame about the price, as they say. So anyway, that's this week's episode of the show. Next week we will be going back to to whiskey, and uh, it will be a really int interesting episode of the show. I can guarantee you that. So until then. Uh, all I have to say is uh, good drowning and uh, good afternoon. <laughs>